Okay, so in this first lecture, I'm going to introduce some very important foundational ideas relating to random variables and probability distributions. We are going to need this information in the rest of this course. And if you study Bayesian statistics at a more advanced level, these are the foundational ideas that you're going to need to be able to follow the story. So I want to begin by explaining what a random variable, a random, what a random variable is. So what a random, a random variable is, is that it's a function that maps one set to the set of real numbers, right? So it associates to each outcome in the element, in the, in the set uh, S, it associates each outcome with a particular real number, right? That's what this function is. It's called a random variable, but it's a function, right? And we are going to call this set S of X, the support of X, and this set S of X contains all the elements that are mapped uh, onto by the random variable. That means all the real numbers are going to be in this support of X, okay? So as an example, it's very important to understand this in the context of a real life example. It's much easier to understand this formal presentation. Suppose that we are going to now toss a coin repeatedly until we get a heads, right? So we might toss it once, we might get a tails, toss it another time, we get a heads. So what can happen is that in the first toss, we might get a heads or we might have to toss it twice to get a heads, so you get a tails and then a heads, or you might need to toss it three times, tails, tails, and then heads, right? So what's going on here is that there's a set of events that can happen. You can get a heads, you can get a tails or heads, tails followed by heads, or tails, tails, heads, and so on. It's an infinite set, right? You could keep on tossing the coin and keep getting tails if you're unlucky, then you get a heads at the end. Right? So what the random variable does is that it maps each of these possible events to a real number. And what's that real number? It's the number of times that you have to toss the coin to get a heads. Right? So the, the set uh, S of X, you know, the support of X, right, uh, of the random variable X will contain discrete values like 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. In principle, you could go on forever and only get uh, heads after a very large number of tosses, right? So that's why I say that it's, it's an uh, infinite set. So this, this S of X is called the support of X, and this will play a very important role in all the modeling that we're going to do later, right? So here's another example that illustrates the idea of a random variable. So suppose I just toss a coin once, that's it, a single toss, right? If I do that, I have only two possible outcomes. I could get a tails or a heads, right? So the, what the random variable then does is, it takes each of those two possible events, you can see them here, tails or heads, and it maps them to a number, right? That number could be zero or one, zero for tails and one for heads, but that's an arbitrary decision. You could decide either way, right? So now what happens is that your set X does not contain an endless number of values like I showed in the previous example, the x can only have values 0 and, one, 0 and 1, right? So this is a finite set now, and it contains two possible values. So that's the support of x now, right? Okay, so what's interesting about this way of talking about, you know, generating random outcomes, right, is that we are going to assign a probability to every possible outcome. And this is done through something called a probability mass function, which I will often call PMF. Okay, so sometimes people write it uppercase, sometimes lowercase, so don't be confused about that, right? So in this case, in this particular example that I've shown you of coin tossing and you know tossing a coin till you get a heads, we are going to associate with this random variable x a particular probability mass function, right? And what does this mass function do? It takes the support of x, each of the you know numerical values in the set S of x, and maps it onto a probability. So a number between zero and one. So that's what, how I write this here in equation one. I'm talking about a probability mass function that maps each of those possible outcomes to a probability, okay? And this is just a formal statement of what I just said, okay? This is just a mathematical, mathematical statement. Okay, so 
let's think about this now, okay? So suppose I come back to my simple example of tossing a coin just once, okay? I'm just going to toss a coin once. And if the coin is fair, then it's reasonable to assume that the probability of getting a heads is 0.5, okay? So what I'm going to say now is that this probability mass function, right, P of x, right, is going to take either zero or one and map it onto some probability, okay? So how does that work, right? So if I have P of x and I plug in zero, I get some probability. That would, of course, be 0.5 in this particular case. And uh, for, prob for x equal to 1, again, the probability will be 0.5. Notice that all the possible outcomes are either tails or heads in this simple example. And so what that means is that the total probability is going to have to sum up to 1, 0.5 plus 0.5. That is, of course, necessary uh, for this to be a probability distribution, right? So that's the probability mass function in the discrete random variable case, right? In this simple example, we have another a uh, function that's available inside or in, in a um, random variable, and this is called the cumulative distribution function. Usually this cumulative distribution function is written with a capital F, okay? And what this function represents is the, it gives you a mapping from, from a particular numerical value to a probability, but what it tells you is the probability of obtaining that number x, you see that here, right? This function, the cumulative distribution function, will tell you the probability of observing that number or some number less than that, right? So it, that's why it's called a cumulative distribution function because it's giving you the cumulative probability of all possible outcomes ranging from x uh, downwards, right? X or less than x, right? So, so formally, you know, we would write it like this. So if I write f of x equal to one, what I'm really asking is, what is the probability of observing one in the support of x or some number less than that, right? So that's how I would write that mathematically. And the way to compute this is simply to sum up the probabilities for all numbers ranging from one downwards. And in our simple example of tossing a coin once, what are these probabilities? You got x equal to zero and x equal to one. These are the two possible you know, outcomes that are one or less than one. So you sum them up and the total probability, of course, is gonna be one, right, in this simple case. Now, I could do another example like this. If I ask, what's the cumulative probability of observing a value like zero or something less than that? Now, there's nothing less than zero in this example. The support of x contains only a zero and one, right? So how do I sum up this probability? Well, it's a trivial sum now. I'm just taking the probability of observing x equal to zero, and that's my cumulative probability now of observing x equal to zero or something less than that, right? So that's how this works. We've got a probability mass function, and we can use this probability mass function to compute a cumulative distribution function. Notice that the CDF, f of x, is actually based on or built from the probability mass function that I showed you earlier. So that's the, the big structure of a random variable, right? It's a mapping from events to real numbers, to real numbers, real numbers have some probability associated with them, and this probability is described through the probability mass function, and you can build the cumulative distribution function from the probability mass function. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have some fun with this idea of a random variable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate tossing a coin 10 times. Now, I could, of course, take out a coin from my pocket and start tossing it 10 times, but this is prone to all kinds of dangers. I might drop it and all kinds of stuff would happen. So it's actually easier to just simulate the situation on the computer. So we're going to do that, right? So there's a function that I will explain more later on, but what this function does is it's called the R-band function. What it's doing is, is that it's producing random zeros and ones, which simulate the tossing of a coin repeatedly, right? So in this particular simulation that I ran, where I specified the probability of getting a heads, right? I get three zeros followed by two ones and so on. If I ran this command again, I'd get different sets of numbers, right? Zeros and ones. These are the elements in the support of x, by the way. Zero and one are the elements in the support of x. And we're doing this 10 times. We're doing 10 experiments. So we're getting a range of different numbers, right? Now, for each of these possible values, zero and one, I have a probability mass function, which I already explained, but which can be uh, written down 
mathematically in this in the in using this formula right so what you're getting here in this probability mass function is x is the input that's either 0 or 1 and if you plug in the x into this equation theta is the probability of success which we fixed at 0.5 in this simulation okay if you plug in 0 or 1 into this equation you will get the probability of getting a 0 or 1 okay so that's what this function is this is called the bernoulli random variable it's a very special a uh, random variable that we will need a lot when we do Bayesian modeling. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a full example that shows you how you can play with this idea of a random variable by just simulating data and looking to see, you know, what happens under repeated generation of random data, okay? So we can also ask a very interesting question for this Bernoulli random variable. Right. What is the probability of getting a tails or a heads? Of course, this is a trivial example because it's, this is such a simple example that you could do in your head. But I'm showing you how you can do this using R. Okay, so there's a, f a family of functions called the D family of functions, D Bernoulli here. What it's giving me here is if I, in if I give it as input the particular uh, numerical value that I want to know the probability of, of 0 or 1, if I put in a zero here or one here, I will get the probability of observing that uh, that particular outcome, right? Notice that I fixed the probability at 0.5. I could have changed this, you know? I could have said the coin is not fair and the probability is 0.1 or something or 0.9 or something. In that case, of course, I would get different numbers. You should try that out and see what happens, okay? Similarly, I can ask what's the probability of observing a one, and of course it gives me back this number. Notice that these probabilities will have to sum to one because these are the exhaustive outcomes. You know, you can't have anything else other than a zero or one in this particular simple experiment of tossing a coin once, right? Okay, so using this probability mass function, I can also compute the cumulative distribution function. And there is actually a built-in function in R that allows you to compute this cumulative distribution function, and this is called the p-family of functions. I call it a p-family because for every distribution, there will be such a function available, and I will show examples later, okay? So in this particular case, I can ask, what's the cumulative probability of observing one or something less than that in this particular random variable where I've set the probability of success at 0.5, and it gives me the answer here. Of course, the answer is one, right? Similarly, I could ask, what's the cumulative probability of observing zero or something less than that? There's nothing less than zero, and so it's going to return this cumulative probability of 0.5, which is just the probability of observing zero, right? So that's the basically the most important thing you need to understand about a random variable. It's got a probability, ma I'm talking about discrete random variables. It has a probability mass function associated with it, a cumulative distribution function as well, and there are functions in R that allow you to compute these probabilities, the probability mass function and the cumulative distribution function. This case is, of course, so simple that you could just, you don't even need a computer for it, but soon we will look at much more complex cases. Yeah. Okay, so what we have seen now is the definition of a random variable. I've shown you an example of a discrete random variable, the Bernoulli, right? And I've shown you how to generate random data using the R ban function from the extra dist package. And I've also shown you how to compute the probability of a particular outcome in this discrete case using the D ban function. And finally, I showed you how to compute cumulative uh, probabilities using the cumulative distribution function, which in R is the P ban function. Right. So now you can start looking at chapter one. I have more detail there, and then. That's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk more about discrete random variables. And uh, we will look at one particular discrete random variable that is very, very important in statistics, and that's the binomial, right? So I'll see you in the next lecture.